My first impressions of American football, sort of how I discovered them, was like, I'm pretty sure it was through uh, an old Xbox game in the early 2000s. I was really young. It was original Xbox. I think it was like Amped Freestyle Snowboarding or something. And I remember hearing uh, some of their tracks and eventually hearing Never Meant and just falling in love with the clean guitar tones and just the vulnerable lyricism. And I used to just, you know, play the first LP on loop constantly. And, uh, you know, all thanks to like a video game, I guess. Yeah. So the first self-titled LP, you know, uh, I heard never meant and, I knew I wanted to hear more, um, eventually got my hands on the record and uh, it was just very different for me. You know, this had to have been maybe 2005, 2006, you know, I was a young kid kind of getting into alternative music and, you know, American football had come out some years before then. And, and it was just like uncovering like a gold mine of just, everything I always wanted to hear um, without even knowing it. And uh, it just kind of one of those things where it just hits that right spot where you can't describe it when you hear a new song, you just want to listen to it for the next couple of weeks on repeat. So I've actually never seen American football live. It is funny because they broke up. I mean, after their first LP, they broke up for years and years and years, and they only recently reunited. And, you know, I haven't gotten a chance to see them because I've been on tour or I've been, you know, somewhere else. So I just know the first time that I see American football live, I'll probably be super emotional for sure. It's my entire childhood, you know. Yeah, I mean, American football kind of was my introduction to playing guitar with open tunings. And I guess I never really looked back. Uh, my guitar playing, as much as I would like it to sound a certain way or whatever, I try and branch out, it always will come back to sort of American football just because that's, you know, it's imprinted in my DNA, I guess. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just always going to be there. I'm not one to do covers. I've never really done covers. Uh, so I figured if I were to do one cover, it would be Never Meant because I think uh, that's the song I probably listened to the most growing up. And it just means so much to me. It reminds me of, you know, being an unsure kid growing up anxious. And it was kind of just a warm embrace around my childhood. And I decided I wanted to do a cover of it. And it was very daunting because the guitar certainly isn't... Uh, it's not easy, you know, uh, it, there's so many moving parts in that song and the time signature is so bizarre. And I always wonder how the hell they even managed to think of that song because musically it makes no sense, but once it happens all together, it's just this beautiful piece of work. I think that Mike Kinsella as a lyricist is just always very raw and visceral and honest. And he never glamorizes sort of, you know, his angst or his pain or his sadness. It's always just very matter of fact and almost mundane, you know, um, just it's relatable. It's not like I'm some fallen wounded angel and look at me, I'm sad. It's just like real stuff that you know, you go through going, growing up and even now with, you know, Mike Kinsella's uh, current lyricism, it's just so relatable. It's almost funny. You know what I mean? Just like, you know, struggling some days or he'll, he'll add some funny line in there where you're just like so self deprecating. Uh, and I just think the realness really resonated with me, honestly, in my own work, for sure. Um, I mean, we've had minor interactions on Twitter. And I remember I did a cover of never meant that they retweeted. And that was kind of like, you know, all my childhood self needed for validation in my art. So, you know, um, but you know, I can't say enough positive things about them. Mike Kinsella is, is a genius. I love everything he does. I love Owen, Captain Jazz. 
Um, and it's really inspired my own guitar playing and lyricism for sure. Yeah, I would just be ranking their whole discography and it is <clears throat> nearly impossible for me to, to rank their work because it's just all so special to me. So I guess I'll just rank it in, in terms of how, uh, how often I've listened to each uh, piece of work and I think the first one would be you know the self-titled American Football LP their first one um, the second one I guess would be their LP3 that they did um, really just beautiful um, you know expanding on the sounds that they built but staying the same and I don't know how a band could come back all these years later and still have that type of impact and sound like they never left all these years later. And then I guess the third, I guess would be the, the, their LP two. And again, that was their comeback where they came back and you're just like, no way. Like sometimes bands come back and it's a whole different thing and for better or for worse, you know, sometimes that's good. But um, the way that American football did it is like they, it was fascinating to me, everything down to the guitar tone and like sounded like it was recorded in the late nineties. And, Mike's voice sounds better than ever. And I just, it's inspiring for me as a musician, especially as I get older, that it's like, you know, you can, you can age and, and still create beautiful music, um, you know, well into your career. So yeah, I guess a good starting point would be the, just the, the original uh, self-titled LP, uh, you know, never meant um, um, the one with the Wurlitzer, uh, you know, when the summer ends uh there's just it's that album that there's just every single one is a smash um and you know relating it to my own music i'd say it's just real it's honest um it, it's got a lot of clean uh telecaster tones which is you know all i have now are telecasters <laughs> uh thanks to my football and yeah if, if people haven't gotten into them i i'd hi highly recommend just diving in and, and you'll see Thank you.